As mentioned in the previous chapter, the Muladhara Chakra is the storeroom in which our experiences and karmas lie. This is the chakra below or before the Svadhisthana Chakra, the root chakra. Now we're talking about the one above, the sacral chakra. The activation of these karmas now occurs in the Svadhisthana Chakra. And is, it is here that we all have the opportunity to purify them. Even though our weaknesses and mistakes are located in this chakra, it is here that a valuable opportunity to develop our human consciousness to a higher level is offered. Through work on the Svarishtana chakra, we are able to bring our baser instincts under control, transform them, and ultimately transcend them. The level of consciousness of the Svarishtana chakra is the subconscious, the sphere of consciousness that lies between sleeping and waking. We have a vague idea of what is contained here, but no complete or clear knowledge. Even when our consciousness is centered, other levels of consciousness always influence our perceptions and actions. The field of our consciousness is like a screen upon which the entire spectrum of our experiences is portrayed. The function of the subconscious is like that of a movie camera, recording each impression that has an influence upon us, externally or internally irrespective of whether we are conscious of it or not. In this way, the subconscious records precisely everything that we experience, think, feel, and do. This explains why inevitably our karmas react upon us, whether we want them to or not. We cannot prevent the consequences because of the subtle tracks, the subtle grooves, impressions known as sangskaras, of our actions that have been imprinted upon our subconscious and therefore the effects are pre-programmed, so to speak. This does not mean that we should just resign ourselves and simply allow things to take their course. It is important to understand that our future destiny is the result of our past and present deeds. Everything that is happening to us today was caused by our earlier actions and thoughts, and everything that happens to us in the future will be the result of our current way of thinking and acting. We are not victims of our past or the puppets of external forces, but rather we are creating our own destiny here and now. To be able to do this consciously, it is important that we confront and evaluate our qualities and intentions honestly, and then direct them consciously towards the good. Once we gain clarity about what is being fed into our subconscious, we are better able to understand our motives and actions and recognize the connection between action and reaction. In this way, we are capable of foreseeing the consequences of our behavior and by altering our behavior, we can influence our future. We are then able to shape our future and beneficially and support our own development. Sorry, we are able to then shape our future beneficially and support our own development. Through the self-inquiry meditation, which is a technique from the system called yoga in daily life, and it's a method of self-investigation and self-analysis, Detailed instructions are given in the book Yoga in Daily Life by Maha Mandaleshwar Parmahan Swami Maheshwarananda. Through this technique, we are given a method of penetrating our subconscious programming and resolving any detrimental behavioral patterns with love, understanding, and forgiveness. When we consciously send beautiful, positive and pure thoughts to the storeroom of our subconscious every day, our destiny will also change for the better. But we should not forget that the reverse also applies. In the course of our life, Kundalini occasionally awakens and rises to the Svarishtana Chakra. However, here it comes up against the barrier of our negative qualities such as envy, desire, 
jealousy, and rage. These block the energy so that it again returns to the Muladhara Chakra. And in this way, the consciousness of many people continue to oscillate between the two lowest chakras without ever being able to rise higher. To break this cycle is not an easy undertaking, as we face an army of innumerable detrimental emotions, prejudices, resentments, and fears that have accumulated during the course of many lives. The only thing we achieve if we fight against them forcefully is that they will either persist even more stubbornly or recede into the depths of the subconscious and hide. Only when we consciously let go are we able to free ourselves from them. But letting go can be extremely difficult. We would, in fact, be very happy to be free of our fears and complexes, but somehow we do not dare let go of these qualities. Instead, we hold on to them firmly and nourish them. The ego leads us to believe that we would lose our identity and personality if we renounced them. And it is here, in the Svadhisthana Chakra, that the ego fights with all possible means to retain its supremacy. The yoga practitioner who has learned to question and analyze everything that occurs within the consciousness, recognizes the cause for the emotions and reflexes that surface from the subconscious and is therefore able to cope with them more easily. Otherwise, it can happen that we fall helplessly from one emotion into another and for a long time we are unable to find our way out of the quote-unquote blind alley of the Svarishtana Chakra. And we'll pause our reading of the hidden power in humans there for now. So thank you for listening. I'm only grateful to be able to share this wonderful book with all of you. Om Namah Shivaya.